this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So we're here for another one of our mass making sessions and today I thought let's get messy and make some little chipboard tiles. So I've brought along a bunch of things and what we're going to do is just make some of these kinds of tiles and we're going to do kind of a variety of them. Now I have got some chipboard. I found this the other day in my Tidy Friday. So I've got this which is plain chipboard it's kind of the negative from some letters so I'm going to use some of that I mean I've brought along a ton of chipboard again I question how much I think I'm going to be getting done here um I've also got some of these chipboards which are you know um oh decorative chipboards you know they have a kind of pattern paper over them so again I'm going to attempt to use maybe some of those I've got some other little ones here as well. So just to kind of give you an idea of the types of things that you could pull in. Now, if you haven't got any chipboard, the other thing that would work perfectly for this is jigsaw puzzle pieces, because of course they're pretty similar kind of thickness to these chipboards. Um, if you haven't got any of them, then cereal boxes or something like that would do absolutely fine. I mean, what you're just looking for is something a little bit, you know, a little bit thick. So if you're using cereal boxes, of course yours aren't going to be quite so thick, but you could always glue them together and kind of double them up. The other thing that you could possibly use is the hardback cover of a book. Um, depending on how thick your hardback cover is, you know, you could probably peel off a couple of the layers, um, you know, from the outside of the book. Let me just pull one in to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So for instance, this. If I were to use this, I would peel off the, you know, the paper that's covering it and get it to, you know, a thickness similar-ish to this chipboard. So peel off a couple of covers, then sand it down because you're going to end up with the bobbly kind of rough, um, you know, cardboard left where you've peeled off the paper. And then you should be able to hopefully cut it down into kind of bits. I mean, of course this is my improvisation i'm not necessarily saying it's going to work it's just an idea that i think might work um but yeah i mean if not definitely a really easy solution would be to just use a cereal packet and then glue kind of two pieces together so that you've got the thickness that you want um right aside from the chipboard i have got a bunch of paints now i'm just using acrylic paints just got a bunch of different ones here i've got some paint brushes obviously to paint the paints on you may want to use some sandpaper. So again, I mean, I just have got a little tiny piece of sandpaper there. And the sandpaper really is for going around the edges after we've done them. Or, for instance, if you're using this type of thing, you may want to go over it just to give it sort of a key for things to stick to. Um, or alternatively, you could again try and peel the top layers off if you're using kind of pre-decorated chipboard do you see the top layer comes off you know I'm not saying every time but quite often it will come off reasonably easily and then again you've got that kind of furry furry texture that I just mentioned about the book cover and then again all you do is just sand that back to give yourself a smooth enough surface to then work on so like that okay so you know you've got different sort of options to use for your chipboard bases um and then the other thing that i've got so that we've got a you know variety going on is i've got some decorative papers and some mod podge because we might do some um using decorative papers and things now the final kind of touches to make your your chipboard pieces I have got um, some tiny stamps. Now, oh, I can't remember. I think they were a set from Stampendous. And unfortunately, mine are quite damaged because I have used them and used them and used them. So I don't really kind of have, you know, many of them left. Um, and the ones that I do have left are not in the best condition now. Um, but they are perfect sizes. The other thing that works quite well for this is I've got some of those Tim Holtz I think they're called tiny things um, stamps because they're all, you know, teeny, teeny stamps. But if you haven't got tiny stamps, the other thing that you can do, of course, is use kind of printables or book images or something like that. So here, for instance, 
these are my film strips and I've got these tiny butterflies now how I think I'm going to be cutting these out I've no idea but I'm going to give it a try um but of course you don't need my principles <clears throat> have a look through your books and you might have just tiny little things in books now if you still haven't got anything to use the final thing obviously that you could possibly use is things like book page so for instance here I mean I'm just pulling this in now I'm just having a look to see uh, okay right so here I've got the word lovely now this is a, ch a children's book so this text is quite big but what I'm thinking is if for instance you decorated up a tile in decorative page you could then put a word on it so that's kind of if you haven't really got a stamp or if you haven't got an image or anything to stick onto your chipboard tile you could use something like that so you're going to need quite an extensive list of things to use today. Of course, you don't have to do everything. You don't have to do decorative papers and paints, you know, and stamps and all of that. You can just kind of cut it down to whatever you've got to hand. Um, and then the other thing that I will probably finish mine off with is using glossy accents. So just pulling in my glossy accents here. Um, but again, you know, if you haven't got glossy accents, you could possibly use Mod Podge or something. Um, or any other sort of varnishy type stuff that you've got and to be honest I mean you don't even have to varnish them I'm just having a look to see if I've got some that aren't varnished and of course I, I haven't but I have got them elsewhere that are not varnished these just I think are all my varnished ones but if you haven't got varnish they're going to look just as nice not varnished um, and then the only other thing that you probably will need is some distress ink because that's going to make all the difference to your your chipboard tile right so quite a long list of of stuff that we've got there so all I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just pa <coughs> painting excuse me I've only just started the video and already my my throat's going that's not great right <laughs> just going to cut this down like this just to make it easier to work with so like that I could probably even manage to get something out of this but I'm not going to worry because you know it gets to the point where it's just kind of verging on the ridiculous of needing to get rid of some things so let's just cut this out like that and again just chop that down like that so I mean to be honest this is probably sufficient. I've got quite a bit here to keep me going because, you know, we've only got kind of an hour. I'm not going to be racing through these at the speed of knots, I'm sure. So I've got a bunch of different colours, so probably best, best start with sort of palest. So I've got some ivory and this is just regular acrylic paint and I'm just going to get painting that onto the chipboard. Now, I mean, obviously, again, like with all my projects, these are not rocket science. They're nothing complicated or anything like that. And I'm sure loads of you have made things like this before. Um, it's just that I do often get requests, you know, do I have a tutorial on how to make my little chipboard tiles? So I thought this would be quite a good one for a mass make. And next week, what I thought we could do is um, use our ribbons to make some little um, decorative pieces using our chipboard tiles that we've made this week and then some ribbon pieces next week if you see what I mean so um, yeah if you want to do that and join me next week you will need some ribbons is the plan so um, yeah hopefully that's all going to be you know really good fun so keep your chipboard tiles somewhere somewhere safe not too safe because like I always say I always think code for keeping some something somewhere safe is actually just code for oh my gosh never find it again but yeah hopefully hopefully don't keep it somewhere too safe that you won't be able to find it but try and keep your tiles accessible-ish right that's that one let's just move my scissors out the way now depending on what punch you've got you might even be able to punch out tiles in a circle now I haven't tried it with my my newer circle punch and my one inch circle punch is actually broken I need to replace it um you know it's actually completely broken um so yeah I won't be punching mine but 
if you've got a big shot or any other similar die cut machine you could of course cut some circles with your big shot and the reason I say that is because of course these chipboard tiles look really really nice as circles um you know I mean they look nice anyway but the circles I think are really really lovely um and you know I'm just not really a fan of cutting circles but you might be a lot better at doing it than me okay there we go and I will probably give these a second coat to be honest so I'm not worrying too too much just getting the paint down in the first instance and you know I like to do these just in bulk i.e you know paint up a bunch and then do all the sort of same stages all at the same time if if that makes sense so you know just getting my paint down on all of them this is quite a fast way to do it I think so like that and you know you could also make these in metallic colors I've done them before with um, gold paint and that also looks really really great so just play around and um, you know mix it up see what you come up with oops okay oops this is very dark I have to say so might have been better off mixing this with some ivory but I mean again you know I can always do the second coat a bit lighter or something so oh, really poured out a lot of paint there it just came flooding out much quicker than I expected so let's just take a bit of that onto here okay there we go and obviously I'll just talk you through um what we're doing you know for five minutes and then we can um you know just relax and chill out and have a, a lovely time making some lovely tiles okay right And I mean, if you haven't got acrylic paints, it, you know, try some other paints or try inks or, you know, even try felt tip, oops, felt tip pens, you know, whatever you've got to hand, um, you know, they don't have to be using the materials that I've got. I'm obviously just using the materials that I have got, if that makes sense. So um, just go for whatever it is that you happen to have on hand. Okay, let's do some lilac. Oops. Oh my goodness, look. Did you see what happened there? It just wasn't really coming out at all. And then just suddenly I had a huge, great big spill out. So let's just do, do this piece as well. As I've got so much paint now. Okay. I mean, again, obviously, you could probably be doing yours a lot more <laughs> effectively than me. I'm just obviously doing this um, quickish because we're doing a video. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, you could pour your paint out into a little palette and things and not be quite so disastrous as I'm being. But sometimes when you're doing <laughs> a video, you just kind of do it in the quickest way possible. Um you know, not because you're not enjoying doing the video, but because you don't want to just bore people mucking about, you know, pouring all the paint out and things. So, yeah. But of course, you know, you may find you have a much better method of doing this. Okay. Oops, get rid of that piece. Okay, right. I'm going to just probably dry mine off with the heat tool. So again, if you don't have a heat tool, you know, it's not an essential thing, but you might just need to just wait for five minutes for your pieces to actually dry. So, you know, don't kind of panic if you haven't got a heat tool. Okay, so I'm back from drying these. Now, the majority of these actually look okay with just one coat because obviously by the time that we put something on these, you know, stamp them up and um, I might do some script stamping and things like that in the background as well they're actually not going to, you know, you're not going to really notice whether they are patchy or not. 
this one of course you know this perhaps looks like it needs you know a bit of help so um let's just go over that with some ivory i don't know if this is going to be a mistake or whether this will look okay let's just give it a try okay I mean, so it's probably best that you don't mix your colours too much because it's not really very successful. Oops, and I obviously hadn't quite dried it off, so now we've got a, a mixture oh, of the green and then some more. Again, you know, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, because by the time we have honestly stamped this, it's, you know, it's really going to look fine. <laughs> let's, let's hope so, anyway. Okay. All right, there we go. So that's that one. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to actually just leave the rest because they're not looking too, too bad. But whilst we're, you know, at it, I'm just going to move these all out the way. And then I'm just going to do my paper covered ones to just show you, you know, what I'm going to do with those. And again, you know, definitely nothing, nothing too complicated or anything like that. Just a little bit on the fiddly side, but that's fine so I'm using some scraps of paper so it's again quite a good project for using up some of your little scraps okay let me just wipe my brush off because then I'm hoping that I can just use the same brush with the mod podge Okie dokie. Right. So then all I'm going to do is just bring in my decorative paper. Might as well start with actually this piece that we just kind of sanded down. Actually, I won't start with that one on there because uh, it's not really big enough. Right. So perhaps we'll pop this down on here. Now, I probably will get rid of this flower. So I'm just going to... Cut that flower off like that. Only because, you know, kind of when I've made these in the past, I do probably prefer them without, you know, extra patterns, if you see what I mean. So all I'm going to do is take my Mod Podge. And again, you know, if you haven't got Mod Podge, you know, use some other glue. Any any glue really should be fine for this. I mean, I just really like Mod Podge and, um, you know, I, I really like it for things like this. But, of course, not everybody does. Not everybody has Mod Podge. So use, you know, use what you've got to hand. Okay. So I'm just going to then press my decorative paper down. Okay. And then we'll just do this one. And I might as well go right the way along and do the other piece as well. So we've got that one like that. And then we can have this one on here. Actually, I'm going to have it that way around. Right, okay. So that's that piece. Pretty well covered with my decorative papers. So we just move that to one side whilst they dry. Okie dokie, let's bring in the next one. You know, and I'm just literally using sort of offcuts and things that I happen to have laying around. Again, trying to keep, you know, like with like, if you see what I mean. So I'll put this one up here. Trying to be quite generous with the Mod Podge because, you know, you don't really want the corners peeling up. Sometimes they do have a tendency to peel up, but that's fine. You can just obviously put another little bit of Mod Podge down. So, there we go. And again, you might want to have just a dry wipe to hand to just help you spread this down. 
like that. Okay, oops, get rid of that little piece there. Um, so, yeah, again, thinking I'm going to cut the red section off and just go with the yellow. Just because I find them easier to use afterwards if I have like consistent colours rather than a mixture of colours. But, you know, you will again find the, the colours that you kind of like best or the feel that you like best. And I'm no way saying, you know, my way is the best way or anything like that. So, like that. Okay. Pop that to one side to dry. And then let's just bring in another couple of pieces. So, just got the rest of that flower press that I used the other day when I was doing Rachel's challenge. So, again, just taking that. And again, I'm just going to kind of get it so that I've got like with like. So I'll just pop that on, on there. Like that. Okay. Pop that one down. And then just do this one over here. Like that. Okay, oops, perhaps I'll put it that way. Hopefully that would be a bit easier to um, cut that down and use that. Okay, right. So that's probably, probably way over ambitious as to how many I think I'm actually going to get done today. Um, right, let's leave that to dry. Well, we might as well just finish off these couple of bits here actually, to be honest. Because, you know, why wouldn't we? Why would we just leave those? Otherwise, that's how I end up with all these scraps of even chipboard. Not just paper, but chipboard and things like that as well. So, might as well just get rid of every single bit like that. Okay. Like right, so that's that one. And then the final piece, I'll just pull in... Another piece of decorative paper. So, I mean, again, you know, I've got slightly thicker paper here. This maybe actually is a little bit too thick. You know, I might find actually it's not not ideal, but let's give it a try. Okay, actually, I'm just going to trim that down. Okay. Just pop that one down. Okay, and then final piece. Oops. Well, I might as well just use this titchy scrap here. I'll just pop that one on there. Okay, right. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to leave those to dry for a moment and I'll pull my painted ones back in. So I'm just going to get rid of my Mod Podge off the desk. And actually I'll give the desk a quick wipe down so it's a bit more pleasant to look at. So hold on. Okay, my desk's clearer now. Oops, missed a, missed a spot there. As soon as I've turned the camera on, I've noticed that. Right, but whilst I cleared the desk, I also just grabbed my punches just to kind of see whether they seemed to go through the chipboard. And to be fair, they did. Um, it's been a long time since I've made the chipboard tiles, so I couldn't really remember. But my chipboard is not that, that thick. The one where I peeled the backing off, this type, can you see, is a lot thicker. I mean, it looks like it's possibly possibly double the thickness or maybe like half, half as thick again. So it may not punch this out. So just kind of have a play, but be careful because you could end up breaking your punch. So... Um, yeah, kind of at your own risk, really. Um, like I say, unfortunately, I don't have a one-inch punch anymore, circle punch anymore. Um, so this punch for me, this feels a little bit on the big side, really. Um, I've got my oval punches, but I'm not sure whether oval is quite right for what I'm planning on doing 
you know, with my chipboard tiles. So that's fine. I've got square ones here. And to be honest, the square ones, I think, just look, you know, just as nice anyway. So let's get on and kind of have a look. So I've just brought along a few little stamps. Now, these stamps here, this one, I think maybe maybe a Prima stamp. I've had it for years, I'm afraid, so I couldn't say for sure. This one, I have no idea, I'm afraid. Again, I've had it for years. It's very well used. It's seen better days. Um, this one here, this was a Tim Holtz Tiny Things stamp. I've put it on the end of this round circle stamp wooden block thing. Um, as you can see, I mean, it doesn't even fit on there. It's too big for the block, but it's it's fine. It You know, it stamps really well like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is just take my black stays on again, you know, I use the black stays on because that's really, you know, the ink that I really particularly like, but you could use anything, you know, you could use any ink that you have. You don't need to have a black stays on or anything like that. So I'm just going to stamp my stamps in little spots around. So let's have a butterfly up here. Like that. And then my clock. Like that. Okay, and I mean, you can see that's not even stamped perfectly. Some of it's paler, you know, but it's fine. It, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to do that for a few of these. Whoops. Went a bit close to the edge there, like that. Again, let's have some birds and some butterflies. Okay. And here, so this is that pale pink colour. Again, just get some birds in there and some butterflies. I mean, these are kind of the stamps that I've pulled out, you know, to do this. But, you know, of course, just use, again, whatever stamps that you've got, you know, to hand. So I'm going to just kind of leave it there for those. And then what I'm going to do is I've got my script stamp. Now, my script stamp, I've got this one, which, again, I've had it for years and years. I'm pretty sure it was prima i think i no longer have the package in i've had it for yeah probably like 15 years but you could possibly still get it if you search prima script prima script stamp it would possibly come up um alternatively i've got this one which is crafty individuals so this one is much more recent so i know that this is still available and then all i'm going to do is just go around my stamped images with the script. Now I'm not pressing so hard with the script if you see what I mean because I want to have it a bit more random and a bit paler than the actual image themselves like that. So and I don't really need to do it over the clock because the clock I'm intending on just doing in a circle. So well, I say I'm intending on doing it as in a circle. That will depend how neat I can <laughs> that I can manage to stamp. Right. So the other ones that I've got are these little whoa, this these little butterflies that I cut out, and I just quickly cut them out to save you guys having to watch um, from my little film strips. So again, I'm thinking could use these, and I thought they'd look quite good on the. On the green actually that might go oh that might be somewhere nice on something else um sorry just pulling those in so i might do two on the green and two on something else so this time what i'm going to do is stamp first because otherwise i'm going to get my script stamp all over the butterflies so i'll just do a bit of stamping like that and then again just going to glue this on I could use my Mod Podge, but I'm just going to use my wet glue. Like that. 
And, you know, I'm not too, too worried because I'm going to be going in with my glossy accents over this. So, you know, it's all going to be good and stick down. Okay. So, oops. Like that. Okay. So that's those two. And then let's do one on the ivory. Oops. So again, just do my scripty stamp in the background first. And to be honest, I might as well just stamp the whole thing because I'm pretty sure whatever I'm doing, it will involve some sort of script. Okay. And we'll just do, I think we'll do a butterfly up there. Okay, oops. Like that. <clears throat> and then we've got this little green one, whoops, which is super fiddly, but. Okay, let's do that one there. Like that, and there. Oops. Right. And then I've also got these. Now, I don't know really whether these are going to work, but I'm thinking we could kind of fussy cut a couple of these flowers. These are, <laughs> these are pretty tiny, so I should have probably done these quickly as well to um, save you guys having to endure watching this, but... Oh, this is going to be fiddly. Right, let's go. No, no time like the present. Let's just get going with this. So just cutting this out as best I can. Okay, oops. Okay, so I hope everyone's having a good week. I know I always say this, but I film this on the Monday. So for me, you know, it's right at the beginning of the week. Obviously for you guys, it's Tuesday. So it's not, you know, you're not too far into your week either. But I hope your week started off okay anyway. Hope the um, weather is okay where you are. We've just got a really grey day here. So touch weird. It's, it's, you know, dryish at the moment. But my goodness, it looks grey. And thank you so much to all those kind people who were worried about my finger last week. So you can see I've got my plaster off now. Um, I've been using the antiseptic cream and touch wood. It's, you know, it's healing nicely. So, um, yeah, I'm able to at least have no plaster now because I don't think it looks too, too unsightly. Um, yeah, and it's not sore anymore, thank goodness, because, my gosh, it was very, very sore. Okay. And I really appreciate everyone's, um, you know, kindness. It's really nice to know that you guys are, you know, worried and concerned. So thank you. Okay. And I have no idea. Lots of you mentioned it could be a chemical burn rather than a, you know, a heat burn. Maybe it was. I really don't know. I mean, that's the very strange thing. I just don't know how I did it, which given how horrible it then got and how much it was <laughs> growing and burning, you would have thought I would remember it, wouldn't you? So yeah, possibly it was. Um, I have no idea, but thank goodness it seems to be getting better now. Because it was getting to the stage where I thought, oh gosh, <laughs> plaster's not even going to cover it. How am I going to do my videos? So uh, yeah, thank goodness it's now you know, healing nicely. It still feels a little bit weird, but yeah, much better than it was. Right, okay, so I've cut these little flowers out and I mean, again, these, oh, oh dear. Did you just see what I did there? Ah, oh, I have my black sit, um, oh, my black sit ink pad on that 
from yesterday, something I was doing yesterday. That's not going to come off now, is it? Oh, that's such a shame because that one's my favourite flower. Oof. I mean, that just doesn't really, yeah, doesn't really cut the mustard, does it? To be honest, it looks awful. Let me put that in the drawer before I end up getting it out again. Oh, what a wally. Oh, actually, you no, know, I must have dipped that into the black soot. You know, my normal pad because um, I don't know now. That's seeming like it's not black city. Or did I dip it in the stays on? Do you know? Perhaps I dipped it in the stays on. Oh, who knows? Right, let's put the lid on that before I have any more any more accidents. Okay, right. Get out my vintage photo. Okay, right. Can't believe I did that after cutting it out. Okay, and just do this one as well. So, I mean, they're not too bad, are they? And, you know, they, yeah, they're probably, probably look okay once they're glued down, I think. Right, okay, let's just go for those. So, just glue these down. i just spread that glue around with my finger at the back so that hopefully it's caught all of those little corners and things that are, you know, anywhere where it's lifted compared to being flat, or as opposed, as opposed to being flat. So, that one. And then this one. Okay. So thank you also to everyone for your feedback last week about the beginners series. Really appreciate that. Um, you know, it's really good to know kind of what people would find handy. Um, oh, perhaps I could have it on the pink actually. Um, what people would find handy. So yeah, I'm putting a little something together, um, having great fun doing it. And you know, it's, it's really nice to kind of revisit things to be honest. Um, and hopefully it's going to be a really comprehensive guide, you know, rather than just a kind of quick, you know, getting started. I've really tried to focus on, you know, lots of different aspects. So hopefully it's going to be a really good and thorough, um, well, I guess series, I suppose. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll all really enjoy it. So because I think there's quite a few people who, to be honest, you know, we make the ephemera, but then we don't actually make a journal. And to be honest, even if you have made a journal, I mean, for me, I really kind of almost dreaded making the journal for my first few because it seemed such a sort of time consuming, very long process that, um, yeah, it just kind of put me off a little bit. So hopefully this is going to just, you know, make it, you know, instill some confidence and kind of make it seem less off-putting, you know, the process of actually embarking on your journal. So I've just cut these kind of in little rectangle shapes there. And like I say, if I had a one inch circle punch, I would now probably just punch out a couple in a circle. Now, because I don't, ooh, I'm going to try and cut freehand. So well not freehand sorry not freehand but using this as a template so I'm just going to put that over the top of that clock and I'm just going to hold this down so actually I'm going to do it that way up just in case I get paint on that tile so who knows if this just looks shocking you know never mind we won't use it so going round As I say, I mean, you could use your big shot. I have got a couple of flower dies that have got circles that I could have used. Um, but obviously, because I'm doing a video, I just didn't want to now sort of go off using special tools that not everybody has. So there we go. Right, made a hideous job of cutting that, even with the template, <laughs> even with my guide. But what I can do hopefully is just disguise my shoddy cutting a little bit with the sandpaper 
So just going round like that. So, you know, it will hopefully just not look quite so misshapen and awful. I mean, if you're using cereal box for your card, I definitely think your punch would probably punch through. Even if you kind of like, if you wanted it thicker, maybe punch one thickness and then glue it onto the second and then cut round the second, if you see what I mean. Um, that maybe would be an ideal way to do it. So it's it's not too bad, to be honest, you know, given it's freehand, I don't think it's come out too, too bad. So I'm just going to do that again, like that, and try and do my bird in the circle. So I'll just cut it down in the first place because that just makes it look a bit easier if there's not so much card there. Yeah, so with regards to my um, beginner series, I mean, hopefully we're going to cover a whole bunch of different things, um, including taking a shopping trip and things like that. So it's going to be really fun. It won't be up probably for a few weeks because... A, I've got kind of other things coming up. Um, obviously, at the moment, I'm doing my Pinterest picks, which is my Pinterest series. There's seven episodes for that. Six? Six or seven. I can't remember, I'm afraid. But six or seven episodes for that. So that's started today. So for you guys, yesterday. Um, and then I've got some other things coming up um, in between. And like I say, because I want to do quite a few different things for beginners... I've got quite a bit of filming to do. Um, so yeah, it will be a little while yet, but I mean, I'm hoping it's going to be just really informative, really helpful and really um, confidence boosting, you know, to give you guys confidence to embrace the process and go for your first journal. So um, yeah, hopefully it's going to be good. But like I say, it's not going to be for a few weeks yet. Right, so that's those. Let's do one with the butterfly. So again, just kind of put that on there. I mean, the only thing is obviously using this as opposed to a punch, it's quite hard to gauge where you need to cut. But I mean, what you could do is I guess cut, cut a circle in some sort of transparency film or something like that and use that for your guide. That would be maybe quite a handy way to do it. Okay. It's really quiet downstairs, isn't it? I dread to think what my daughter's doing. <sighs> She's probably on Minecraft again. She's loving it now. Absolutely loving it. Okay. Her and I are going to um, make some little bits and pieces later, do some crafting later together, so not not on camera um but you know kitty kitty crafting so that's our activity for today because today is half term so yeah hence she's kind of laying around now laying around i think she's kind of still in bed playing minecraft still in bed on my ipad so uh, yeah right so that looks quite nice doesn't it okay so that's those. Now, actually, I'll just do one of these clocks on the green, I think. And then um, I'm going to just do a couple with the patterned paper to just give you an idea with those as well. So, oops. yeah, I mean, obviously, these are a little bit more time consuming because I don't have the punch. If you've got the punch and it does work through your chipboard, these are going to be miles, miles quicker than this. Um, failing that, if you just cut rectangles, again, that's going to be a lot quicker. So, and I do think that the rectangle ones look quite cute too. So don't kind of feel like you have to do circles. You really don't. Okay. And, you know, I mean, to be honest, I'm always so flabbergasted because everyone has such fantastic ideas. If you haven't got, you know, the small stamps and things like that, 
you know, or you haven't got a suitable chipboard, I mean, just read down the comments because honestly, you all have the most amazing and incredible ideas. So, you know, I'm sure that there's probably tons of ideas that will be listed in the comments of alternative things that you could be using. So don't kind of be, um, you know, put off just because you don't have something that I'm using. I'm sure that there's like a ton of different things that, you know, people are going to have options for and ideas for. Okie dokie. Like that. And, oh, let's just do... Let's do one in the pink because the pink's really pretty, isn't it? So again, just going to do that clock. The clocks are probably my favourite, to be honest. Okay. Okie dokie. To be honest, the clocks probably, they're not my favourite. My favourites are those little cameo ones that is the one I'm using for the template, this one. This is the stamp that I think is from those, I think they are Stampendous. I think they're like little charms or something like that. Um, and oh my gosh, they were my favorite stamps for such a long time. I mean, my little cameo one, she's kind of, yeah, seen better days now. I don't even know whether she's still even intact. She was floating around in my drawer and now she's, you know, cause she's got no stick left and, things like that she's been used and used and used and I have tried looking up those stamps on eBay and things and weirdly enough they often seem to come up in Australia um I don't know is Stampendous maybe a Australian company I I really haven't got the foggiest but yeah they often come up in Australia but then of course they're not very cheap because the um you know the postage costs are quite pricey so yeah, but have a look because um, I might just be missing them. You know, there may be some other places that sell them that I just haven't seen. So that's those ones. And then I'm just going to show you kind of a couple with the decorative papers. So, for instance, these decorative papers. Again, we could just stamp on. Let's stamp on the butterfly probably do it that way around like that and we'll just try one with the bird like that oh my gosh I mean that bird looks so gorgeous on there doesn't it and then I'll just do a little bit of script as well and you know again you might want to just do kind of script like you know, rather than all over, but just a little bit kind of in the corners or something like that. So hopefully you guys can see that. It's just like in the corners. So I'll just move that to one side. Right, I've lost track now of how long I've been filming for, so I must try and keep my eye a little bit because I think I'm up to like 24 minutes and I know that I've stopped a couple of times. So pretty sure we must be getting close to an hour now had such a nice time doing this these are really quite relaxing to make to be honest really nice to make and I haven't made any of these for such a long time I've forgotten how much I like doing them okay there we go right so now if I just kind of show you the finishing touches Right, again, let me just let me just wipe my stays on and make sure uh, my pad and make sure I haven't dipped it into any sort of black soot or anything like that. Honestly, I don't know what happened. I must have dipped it in the stays on, I think. So here you can just go round with your blendy blendy tool and it just literally transforms that from quite a boring tile to looking really quite, you know, quite vintage and quite yummy. So I'll just go around like the butterfly there. I mean, that one looks gorgeous, doesn't it? And then again, this one. So for your paper ones, 
you know, you could sand some of the corners down and things to just give it a more distressed appearance. Again, you know, these are just all options. Find what kind of works for you. But that's quite nice. And then again, just go in with my blendy tool like that. Isn't that just so lovely? And then what you could do is you could go around the edges with a bit of gold. So let me just get my my gold, um, oh, what do you call it, Inca gold. And again, if you haven't got Inca gold, you could use paint. I mean, you could probably even use nail varnish if you've got some sort of nail varnish with a sort of metallic-y coat. Um, but, you know, you don't need to have the gold. I mean, this one, well, all of the ones that I've got pretty much, they haven't got any metallic edge. They're just literally, you know, inked up. So you don't need to have gold is what I'm saying but if you did want to just add a special kind of edge you could just go around your edges with the gold like that so you might want to do like a few different types some with gold some without gold you know and just kind of play around now as you can see that's obviously not using any glossy accents or anything like that and I think that looks gorgeous now as it is. So you really don't have to have, you know, all special things. You can just go for them like this. If you have got glossy accents, I mean, I personally just think that really finishes them off like really, really nicely. So all that I do is just go around with my glossy accents. And actually, my glossy accents never seems to come out anymore. So um, let me just quickly pierce the hole. To be honest, I think there was something wrong with this bottle as soon as I got it, because it never did want to come out. Oops. And it's never improved ever since I've had it. And it's quite old now. I do like glossy accents. Just gonna check whether that's coming out now. Might not have pierced it enough. Okay, hold on a moment. Okay, so then all I do is I just go round my tile with quite a generous blob oops of the glossy accents oh i might have to order some more now okay and then i often just go in with my finger you could you know you could go on with your finger you could go in with a brush however you find easiest really but i mean i just find it quite easy to just kind of spread it about a little bit with my finger and then i mean it should kind of level itself really but just to give it a bit of a helping hand to get it started like that okay and again obviously it works as well over that decorative paper as well so like that okay and that's your tiles so Oops, let me just wipe my wipe my hands now. Um, and then my biggest thing is trying to remember that they're actually drying and then not actually <laughs> touching them at all. So obviously I then put them out the way. So I'm just going to kind of carry on and just finish off the rest of my tiles that I've kind of started today. Um, and then, you know, you're going to end up with some lovely tiles like this. Probably leave these for, you know, 24 hours or something if you've glossy accented them because that's just to be on the safe side. Um, so I hope that you like them. And as I say, hopefully next week we could come along and do the little ribbon, I don't know, um, thingies, whatever they're called. Not the jabbets that we made um, a couple of weeks ago, but the other um, ribbon things that I made. We'll make some of those using some of our little chipboard tiles. So I hope this has been helpful to you. And, you know, hopefully you'll have lots of fun making some. And like I say, you know, they're quite a good way to use up some scraps and things as well. If you're going to be doing the decorative paper ones. Um, and yeah, I hope that you like them and have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much and see you guys soon. Thanks, Anne. Bye.